Decades before Chernobyl, the sky over the Russian Urals turned purple. A cloud of invisible fallout drifted across thousands of square miles, from a city so secret it didn't appear on a single Soviet map. Built to fuel the USSR's first nuclear bomb, its river was poisoned, its lake could kill you in an hour, and the outside world had no idea it existed. Tonight on The Unknown Files, the hidden birthplace of the Soviet nuclear program, City 40, and the 1957 disaster that scarred the land and its people for generations. In 1947, as the Cold War accelerated, the Kremlin chose a remote pine-forested lakeshore about 80 kilometers from Shelyabinsk in the Ural Mountains. They weren't just building apartments, they were creating a closed military-industrial city. It was given no public name, only a postal code, Shelyabinsk 40. At its heart rose a vast nuclear production complex called Mayak, Russian for lighthouse. Mayak wasn't a power plant, it was a weapons-grade plutonium factory, the Soviet counterpart to America's Hanford site, built to supply plutonium for the USSR's first nuclear weapon, an implosion-type atomic bomb codenamed First Lightning. To guard the secret, the entire settlement was ringed with barbed wire checkpoints, armed patrols, and code-numbered mail routes. The city itself didn't appear on maps. Scientists, engineers, and their families were rewarded with modern flats, reliable food supplies, even theaters and a lakeside park. Luxuries rare in post-war Russia. In exchange, they surrendered freedom of movement and pledged absolute silence. By 1949, Mayak had produced the plutonium core for that first Soviet nuclear bomb. In the documentary City 40, former residents described the strange mix of patriotic pride and prison town discipline, calling it a paradise inside a cage. Speed was everything in the nuclear arms race, and safety corners were cut. Starting in 1950, Mayak's liquid high-level waste was pumped straight into the nearby Tekya River. Dozens of riverside villages drank, fished, washed clothes, and watered livestock there. IAEA linked studies later measured radio contamination in the riverbed hundreds of times above natural background. In 1951, authorities finally surveyed the damage. By 1953, they banned household use of river water, but by then, thousands had already been chronically exposed. Entire hamlets on the upper Tesha were evacuated, yet many families stayed and continued to farm the contaminated floodplains. Modern health research on these Tesha River cohorts still finds elevated cancers and hereditary effects decades later. The gravest blow came on 29th September, 1957. Inside Mayak, a cooling coil failure in a buried steel tank holding more than 70 tons of high-level nitrate acetate waste went unnoticed. Heat and pressure built for days until the tank detonated like a chemical bomb, blasting off its 160-ton concrete lid and hurling a column of radioactive debris kilometers into the sky. Villagers miles away saw the sky glow violet purple and thought nuclear war had begun. The incident, later called the Kaishtim disaster after the nearest officially recognized town, released an estimated 20 million curies of fission products. Over 20,000 square miles were contaminated. About 270,000 people lived in the plume's path. Only 11,000 were evacuated, many of them days or weeks late. In Ozersk itself, doctors were forbidden to write radiation sickness on charts. They used the euphemism, special disease. Survivors recall skin burns that wouldn't heal and funerals with no explanation. The catastrophe stayed hidden until 1976, when dissident scientist Joris Medvedev exposed it to the West. The International Nuclear Event Scale later rated Kishtim Level 6, the world's third worst nuclear accident after Chernobyl and Fukushima. The 1957 explosion was only part of the story. For years, Mayak also channeled medium-level waste into Lake Erdiash, which locals grimly called the Lake of Death. To immobilize the hottest sludge, engineers used a shallow reservoir called Lake Karachai. In the drought of 1967, water levels dropped and the lake bed dried. 
summer winds picked up the exposed radioactive silt and spread it across the southern Urals for hundreds of kilometers. Dosimeters showed airborne concentrations high enough to deliver a lethal dose within an hour at the shore. Decades later, the lake was finally backfilled and capped with concrete and rock, completed between 2015 and 2016, to prevent further dust storms. The Soviet Union eventually collapsed, but secrecy lingered. In autumn 2017, radiation monitoring stations from Scandinavia to the Balkans detected a cloud of ruthenium-106. At environmental levels, it was harmless, yet its fingerprint pointed to a release during spent fuel reprocessing somewhere in the southern Urals. Independent studies identified Mayak as the most likely source, a claim Rosatom officially denied. The cloud circled Europe before fading. The precise cause remains unresolved. Today, Ozersk looks like a normal Russian provincial city. Around 90,000 residents, schools, buses, lakeside cafes, still ring-fenced by checkpoints. Health surveys show roughly double the national incidence of some cancers. In the 1950s to 60s, many death certificates listed anemia or gastritis instead of radiation injury. The documentary City 40 captures residents saying they were proud yet poisoned, guarded but never safe. Lawyer Nadezhda Kutapova, who led compensation suits for the Teka River families, eventually fled the country after harassment. These statistics have faces. Workers, mothers, children who once swam in a river they were told to trust. Closed cities breathe their own folklore. Rumors of tunnels under the Urals, strange lights in the forests, even the 1996 tale of a tiny mummified figure nicknamed Alyoshenka which tabloids called an alien, but scientists believe was a severely deformed, premature infant, likely another casualty of a toxic environment. Myths aside, the truth remains. Contamination ignores borders. Rivers run beyond fences. Winds carry both isotopes and stories. From the Techa River discharges to the Kishtim explosion, the Karachi dust storm and the 2017 ruthenium cloud one pattern repeats, the physics was precise, the governance messy, and the people in between became just a line on somebody's classified ledger. City 40 is more than a Cold War relic. It's a warning of what happens when secrecy outweighs safety. You've been watching The Unknown Files, where we shine a light on the places history tried to hide. If you want more forbidden city stories, Cold War secrets and impossible site investigations, Hit subscribe now, ring the bell, and join us as we dig up the next chapter of the world's hidden past. Drop a comment below. Should the next file we open be Mount Yamantau's mountain base, Hanford, America's twin of Mayak, or the villages still living along the Tekka River?